Welcome to the next installment of my video lecture series for Intermediate Microeconomics. And in this particular video lecture, I'm going to be looking at a topic in Chapter 2, uh, taking a look at determining equilibrium given supply and demand equations. And I'm also going to be taking a look at and showing you the impact of government intervention on that equilibrium. So in this one, we're going to be taking a look at a labor market, and we're given the demand and supply functions. So the demand for labor, the quantity demand of labor, is going to be equal to 10,000 minus 100 W, where W is the hourly wage rate. And the supply is equal to, the quantity supplied is equal to 2,000 plus 1,900 W. So you are given the supply and demand functions. And what we want to find out is what is the initial equilibrium, W and Q. So we want to find the equilibrium wage rate and the equilibrium quantity of labor in the, this particular market that we're taking a look at. And as always, the equilibrium is going to be where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. So if we just set QD and QS equal to one another, that's the first step that we're going to take. So now we have 10,000 minus 100 W is equal to 2,000 plus 1,900 W. So if we add 100 W to both sides and subtract 2,000 from both sides, we end up with 8,000 equals 2,000 W, dividing both sides by 2,000. We get that the wage rate is equal to 4. So we've determined the equilibrium wage rate. Now we want to determine the equilibrium quantity. In this scenario, I always recommend that students place the W into both the demand and supply equation. Uh, the rationale for this is that if you do this, you should get the same answer for QD and QS. If you don't get the same answer, the likeliest explanation is that you calculated the equilibrium wage rate incorrectly. So all we're going to do is put 4 in place of W in the demand equation and we're going to put 4 in for W in the supply equation. So there we have QD is equal to 10,000 minus 100 multiplied by 4, so it's 10,000 minus 400, so QD is equal to 9,600. QS is equal to 2,000 plus 1,900 multiplied by 4, so that is 2,000 plus 7,600, which gives us 9,600, so you can see we've got QD is equivalent to one another. QD and QS are equal to 9,600, so we could be fairly certain that we calculated W correctly. So the equilibrium wage rate is 4,000. Uh, I'm sorry, the equilibrium wage rate is 4, and the equilibrium quantity is equal to 9,600. Now we want to take a look at what occurs if a minimum wage is instituted and it's equal to 5. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to insert the 5 into both the demand and supply equation. So we're going to ins insert 5 here, and we're going to insert 5 over here. So we get QD is equal to 10,000 minus 100 multiplied by 5. So it's 10,000 minus 500. So the new quantity demanded is going to be equal to 9,500. And we do the same for the quantity supplied, 2,000 plus 1,900 multiplied by 5, which is 2,000 plus 9,500, and QS is equal to 11,500. So the 9,500 is the new employment level. This is what is demanded by uh, the companies hiring individuals at that particular wage rate. And what ends up occurring is we have an excess supply of 2,000 because QS is greater than QD, the quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded, so we have an excess supply, which is equal to QS minus QD. So the new employment level is going to be the uh, 9,500, and we're going to have an excess supply. Also realize what occurred here. Originally, employment level was equal to 9,600, and now it's equal to 9,500. So that means that 100 people ended up getting laid off. 
All right, so we originally had 9,600 people employed. Now we only have 9,500. So 100 individuals got laid off because of the institution of this minimum wage. And then if we want to see what the excess supply is, we see that's 11,500. Uh, 11, and QD is equal to 9,500. We subtract that from Q, QD from QS, and that gives us the excess supply. And so we have 100 people who are laid off, but now we have an additional 1,900 people who have entered the labor market who weren't officially part of the labor market because the wage rate was too low. By raising the minimum wage to $5, this causes 1,900 individuals to enter into the market. So let's take a look at what happens to the change in total labor payments. In order to do that, we just multiply the wage rate by uh, the employment level. So initially, the wage rate was equal to 4, and the employment level was 9,600. And now we have the minimum wage of $5, and the new employment level is equal to 9,500. 9, so we multiply 5 times 9,500. And we do this for both of these. And we end up with uh, the initial uh, compensation to labor is equal to 38,400, and the new compensation of labor is equal to 40. 7,500. So realize that that the people who are still working are better off because we, we see that the payments to labor have has increased by 7,100. Don't assume that that means that everybody is better off because remember 100 people got laid off. They used to get paid and now they're not getting paid. So make sure you're aware of that, that even though the payments to labor has increased, not all the people who were originally employed have benefited because some of them have been laid off.